we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech, uh, and we're doing Community Matters with Robert Sue. Uh, and Robert is uh, with the United States uh, Census 2020, uh, doing his job. Welcome to the show, Robert. Aloha. Thank you so much for inviting me to the show. Thank you. Well, I mean, I think it's very important we talk to people like you. Lord knows you've been through some issues in the census. Um, the administration has intimidated um, a lot of people, trying to scare them away from participating and answering questions candidly in the census. Uh, I'm reminded of the, uh, you know, the, the move on the Hispanics, uh, the Latinos uh, a year or two ago, which I'm sure it scared a lot of people away and they're still scared away too. Um, that hasn't changed. And then it went up to the Supreme Court a couple of times about certain questions. Um, and I'm not sure that the administration has actually changed uh, even in accordance with the rulings of the Supreme Court. So we have a census that is, um, has lost public trust, lost confidence by the people. This is very important. We have a census that has the confidence of the people because the census determines a lot of issues, including money, uh, you know, and voting boundaries and so, and so forth for the next 10 years. And actually that's a long time. So it's very important that workers like you um, a, get good information the best you can, and you can override all the intimidation, and B, um, that you, you build public trust in the census. So Robert, it's really important that we talk to you. Tell me what you're doing you know, in the census in order to build trust in the census, in order to get the best information in the census. Uh, sure, yeah. I, uh, my role as a partners, partnership specialist, basically, I was sent from LA regional office, try to be a liaison, a bridge between the community here and the Census Bureau. And you know, it's so important because as you just mentioned earlier, without a public trust, people are scared. And I try to convince people saying about, based on the title 13 in the federal law, everything is confidential. And I'm here with everybody. I, I don't want to ruin my reputation by showing my sincere attitude, showing, you know, don't worry about it. You have my promise. And I will try my best to protect everything. And I'm your bridge. So I'm at the end zone. So your voice can go through me to be heard by the top, you know, authority. If you don't speak out, then nobody will hear you. Yeah. So that that is my, my main role as a liaison, the bridge and to com communicate with people, to bring back the public trust. I yeah, think that's well, always a trouble, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and we, we saw that happen with the Latinos and uh, they, they ran away because uh, they didn't want to be, um, you know, they didn't want to have uh, ice knocking on their door in the middle of the night uh, in some kind of raid or roundup uh, and, and ruin their lives. So they, they didn't want to answer questions. And, um, you know, then it was a question about citizenship, the same thing. and. Uh, you know, people really lost confidence there a couple of years ago. But what we didn't hear about is, is the Chinese thing, because the administration is, is uh, taking all steps possible, um, you know, to, to uh, what am I sorry, criticize, to uh, mislabel, to uh, make it hard for the Chinese from China to operate in this country and to be part of the census. So you have a special role um, that goes, um, you know, parallel to, but perhaps even beyond what happened with the Hispanics. So what is the feeling in the Chinese community? Uh, who are we talking about? Who are we worried about when we say we got to build trust? Well, again, we're talking about Chinese. Yeah. They are Chinese that are new immigrants. You know, they are Chinese are locally here, maybe more over here, hundred or a couple hundred years ago. So, and the new immigrant, they're Chinese from mainland China. They're Chinese from Taiwan or other region, or Hong Kong, or Vietnam, or whatever, you know, the overseas Chinese. So everybody has a different, you know, uh, historical back background, and they have different concern. And, you know, I think early this year, actually since last year, you can see the popular, you know, uh, very popular news about what happened in Hong Kong. And that bring up alert. I believe most of people uh, in Honolulu here, if they're from Hong Kong, they will worry about their family back in Hong Kong, what, what's gonna happen to them. Yeah. So because of that agenda, 
it actually a lot of those, especially new immigrants, they keep low. They try not to expose themselves. They keep silent. And, and that's the nature, the ethnic background, because Chinese people are usually more conservative, self-conservative in, 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 the, in the history for 5,000 years. They don't care who is in charge of the country. All they care is as long as my family and myself is safe, we keep quiet. Well, because it's of that. Interesting. It's interesting <laughs> what you're saying is that, <clears throat> that, that the pressure, the intimidation is actually from two points of view. One is they should say something that would offend the Chinese government in Beijing. Um, and as the Lord knows, there's enough things you can say to offend the Chinese government in Beijing. And, um, and then the other side is uh, they could say something to offend the Trump administration here because he doesn't like Chinese. So you get it from both sides. <laughs> You, you have a very difficult job, Robert. So we're stuck in between. That's, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like a sandwich, we're stuck in between. Yeah. So we have to be very carefully to handle, you know, how we say we don't want to upset people. We don't want intimate people and then more upset about it and walk away. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so what, what, do they, what do they say to you? Uh, look, Robert, you know, thank you for your advice and consultation. We really appreciate, um, you know, your efforts in this, but we want to lie low. And what do you say back to them? Well, actually, to be honest, in past year, my experience when I go to the community, talk to people, I would say more than 95% of people, first time heard about census. They don't know about it. They don't know about the consequence of the census to them. So awareness is a problem. It seems that there's a you know, public education awareness issue. So the first couple of months is to build a trust. So they open their heart and they can talk to you. They have willing to talk to you. So I think that's a big change. So now they understand. We're not doing this for the government or for, for government in USA or the government for China, China, China or whatever. But we're doing for ourselves, for our children, for our next, next generation. So now they understand. So I'm, I'm very happy that the, the outcome because after that first two, three months to build a trust, that is the most difficult part because they look at you, they're scared. No, no, I don't, we don't trust government. <laughs> you know, I don't want to talk to you. But now they, they voluntarily to invite you to participate in the, the, the activity, especially during the COVID-19. You know, it's hard. They send me the, the, the Zoom or WebEx invitation. It is, I build a trust. I think that's the most successful one. They know I can trust Robert Sue. The endeavor they trust, you know, Bureau of Sensors, which I, I feel proud of it, you know. Well, what do you say to them when they when they say, "Look, um, uh, this this may or may not remain private because the government gets all this information. Um, the first, the United States government gets it, and they're supposed to use it in, in confidentially. They're supposed to use it to develop, um, you know, um, to develop uh, the distribution of funding and and uh, and voting boundaries and so forth." Um, but how do we know that they won't pass it off to some other agency, like, for example, Department of Homeland Security, Immigration Service? How do we know that? <clears throat> what do you say if they raise that question? Well, I reassure them, there's a federal law, Title 13, it guarantee and assure nobody allowed to touch the data from Census Bureau, that it doesn't matter you are FBI, CIA, Homeland Security, no any law enforcement, including even the, the social welfare. They cannot use your data to disqualify you because everything is 100% confidential. Even myself, if I say so, I leak something, I could be sentenced up to five years in jail or, or $250,000 fine. It's very, very serious. And I, I used working for the tax department you know, before under title, title 26. We're supposed to secure all the tax Payers information, there are lots of confidential information. But tax department not as rigid as Census Bureau because if we get court subpoena, CIA, FBI, law enforcement subpoena, we can submit your data to them. But Census Bureau cannot, based on Title 13, everything is confidential. Ah, and on the Chinese side, on the, uh, the Beijing side, um, it's very unlikely they're going to be able to, the Chinese government, unless they hack into the system. They're not going to be able to uh, get the data about what people have answered on the census. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Not get it from Census Bureau. But you know, 
the the technology right now, the spy all over the room over there, there could be some somebody in, you know, just embedded inside the community, observe it, you know, it become a blacklist. And that's a scary part. You, you know, when you hear people missing when they travel to China, <laughs> well, because you're under the blacklist. So there got to be something going on. I don't know, but I think that's what people worry. So I heard recently I, I had some people up from China, the new immigrant. They say, you know, they got to watch out because they're still Chinese citizenship. They only have a P, the green card here. So if they become like this, not only their family might suffer in China, also when they get back to China, they, might, they could be in trouble. Yeah. So those are the people that are most scared, people from Hong Kong, people from China. So I don't see other region have problem. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, well, that, is, that is scary. So are you able to uh, convince them it's okay? Are you, what, what kind of response do you get? And, and are, there, are there holdouts who, you know, are not assured by what you tell them? Sure, I, I, I basically I explained to them the 2020 census, the questionnaire itself, it doesn't involve anything sensitive. It's very basic. It doesn't even ask your social security number or your income, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's just basic the information about your, the size of your family, your age, you know, your, your ethnic you know, background. And those shouldn't harm you at all because we don't touch something sensitive in the, in the questionnaire. And that's off the record, no, that's no problem. So I just make sure nothing has been, will be asked about your personal confidential information and nothing sensitive. You won't get trouble back to China, say I have a three, three you know, family member in this household, no. Those kind of question is very simple, you know, so very straightforward. And at least they understand. I can explain to them now all this, you know, it, it's very, very safe for you. Yeah. So how you know how you're communicating with people, how are you doing it? I mean, we are I am reminded, I'm reminded every moment that we are in COVID now. So how do you connect with them? Do, do you do you go around physically? Do you do you talk on the telephone? Do you send mail? Um, do you have uh, Zoom meetings? What do you do? Yeah, I actually, to be honest, I had to mention uh, when I first started, that was before we shut down. And that part, I built up the trust in the first two, three months, you know. And, you know, since then, it, uh, one of the key things for them to build, to, to build a trust with them is I speak the language they speak. Yeah, I don't come in here with official page, you know. I'm a, I'm from a federal government. I want to talk to you. I come here to talk to you as a friend with your mother tongue language. So yeah. if I go to Mandarin speaking area, I speak to them in Mandarin. I go to Taiwanese speaking area, I talk to them in Taiwanese. Yeah. So a lot of people told me. How about Cantonese? Do you speak Cantonese? Cantonese, I don't really speak that well. Uh, but you know, interesting is. We have the same character. You know, the first emperor, one of the biggest contributions he has for the country, for the nation is he unified the language. It doesn't matter how, what kind of dialogue, we write it down, you're all the same. I can show them my writing. <laughs> they mm -hmm. can understand. Ah, good, 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 good. <laughs> so that's, that's a good part. You write it down, everything's the same. <laughs> Just good. pronounce different. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway, okay, we have a slideshow, Robert. Uh, why don't we go through the slideshow and you can tell us more about Census 2020. Sure, yeah. So uh, let's go uh, next. Yeah, I think uh, this, the next screen, yeah, that explains, we just talk about that. Why I put a slide there, two different big group of community. One is the Chinese Mandarin speaking group. The other one is Taiwanese man, you know, uh, speaking you know, group. And you don't want to miss anybody. We want to count. 100% accurate and complete for it. Doesn't matter whatever language you, you speak. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. so that was the reason I put that slide. Go next, please. So the so first one, we know the biggest Chinese group is the local Chinese who immigrated to Honolulu, move, you know, to Honolulu, Hawaii, probably 200 years ago. And they have a lot of people here. You know, they have many, many generations. And Chinese Chamber of Commerce is a key. That is the first organization I got to approach because under Chinese community, you know, uh, uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce, there are hundreds of organizations under them. So through them as my bridge, they can coordinate and communicate back to a lot, uh, down to a lot of different organizations down there. Mm -hmm. uh, the picture showing that, the real showing that one is 
the former president Michelle, she is, you know, the president of Chinese Chamber of Commerce uh, when I first get on board and she's been very proactive, supporting it. The lady next to her is the current president of you know, Chinese Chamber of Commerce, Elvira. She, I think she started from June as a new president of Chinese, you know, Chinese Chamber of Commerce. And they both are very supportive. They send out a newsletter weekly even monthly for Linton, the news article to remind everybody important the census and you gotta do the census. So Chinese community uh, is very, very uh, uh, supportive. Again, they are very excited too because this is the first time I ever have a census bureau of people come to talk to them. Yeah. So they, they, they appreciate it. We recognize them as a one entity there. So Yeah, well, it's a good thing. So yeah. but how do you identify them? I mean, if you start out on a given Monday morning, how do you find and connect with um, the Chinese people, you know, or your group, so to speak, um, to talk to them about the census because uh, they're not going to come to you necessarily. How do you get to them? Well, I actually, I, uh, I did some research and come out, you know, they actually, first of all, the well-known Chinese people here in town, you know, like, you know, Chu Lang Hua is, she's very active in Chinatown area. And it's very, very, good old friend, I know her 30 years ago. So I have a meeting with her. She gave me a one book called Red Book. And that has a whole list of Chinese organization, you know, in, in, the, in, in the books, they list it out. And from there, I asked her opinion, which organization, you know, have what kind of special, unique, you know, features, characters. So I put a note in what organization, what I can talk what I should not talk so be, be, be more sensitive. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for me, I, I get in, you know, in touch with the key. Again, after that, Chinese Chamber of Commerce is the first one I, I contact to. And you know, they are very friendly, very nicely. Because I'm not here to, 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 to steal any, any confidential information as a spy. <laughs> so I build a trust. Of course, it takes some time, but as I say, two months for me to build a trust and I'm very happy about it. You know, I, did, I, I say, I told my friends, say, you know what, after census finish, because I'm walking in China so much, I will be a mafia in Chinatown. You told everybody <laughs> about, about Robert Sue, they would know, yeah, I know that guy wears shirt and tie walking around the town all the time. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of friends over there. <laughs> well, a lot, yeah, exactly. So now they all know, me. oh, that's a census guy. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Robert, go with the slides, more yeah. slides, yeah. So the, the, the next one is when I talk to Chinese Chamber of Commerce, so they are, Biggest any you know activity in the year, of course Chinese New Year. That's that's very big one, but it's a very crowded. As I put a something more unique and people may be more interesting is Narcissus Queen, yeah. and it was very interesting because in my life, this is the first time in my life participated the beauty pigeon like, like, like this. So we were offered by the Chinese Chamber of Commerce to have a free booth, and we can make presentation, talk to people over there, and the most beautiful part. We can take a picture with a beautiful lady just got elected over there <laughs> and they're holding center sign. I think that's very good. Yeah, so it's very good publicity, you know. So, so that is one of the very good things that happened. Yeah. And <laughs> the other one is uh, we know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, nobody expected COVID 19 will happen suddenly like this. And good thing is, before that happened, we already encouraged because of new technology, we should not just doing only the in-person, you know, uh, promotions, something we can do, which use the, the internet, the web. So Chinese Chamber of Commerce put a front page has a link directly to 2020 census. So that allow everybody, if they're interested in the about census or you want to respond to questionnaire, you could have a link, you want to make it. I think that's something very, very, you know, good by using technology. So, yeah. yeah. So the uh, census form, um, uh, I guess it's online, but you can also uh, you can also write on it on paper. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you ever deliver it to them? Do you ever ever help them fill it out, uh, or do you have uh, other people who help you help them fill it out? Actually, we don't have a, the paper form. The paper form actually was sent out after Census Bureau didn't response, didn't receive a response because this is the first time ever that we take online you know, uh, response. And this is very unique, very, very nice that we apply the new technology. So 
uh, up to today, we have 62.5% uh, response in, in our state of Hawaii. Okay. You, Does that mean all the whole state, every, every group, or does it just mean that your, your Chinese community? No, the whole state, the whole state, every group. Yeah, Total, okay. our you know, response rate, the self we call as a sales response rate is 62.5%. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't respond after a certain you know, timeline, Census Bureau will send out, a, you know, first of all, they send out invitation later. That invitation data has a census ID. You can use ID to log in, you know, to website, to file online, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't respond at certain time, then there's a follow up, you know, invitation data reminder, you know, up to probably about three, four times, then they will send you a paper form. So you, we don't get a paper form. It's, the household member, if you don't respond census online or by phone, the other one you can use for telephone to respond, you know, the census. So, and then if you don't do either online or by phone, then you will receive the paper form. So I offer to those community partners through the, the newsletters or, 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 or email, email, Put my contact information. If any time you have any question, you you're free to give me a call. So that's how I can support them. After we shut down mid March because of COVID nineteen, we actually can go over the phone. Uh, uh, I can help those. Yeah, and the organization they will call meeting by using Zoom or WebEx for video conferencing. So I can present and show them what to do too. Yes, mm, that's uh, great. Until the end of July, we actually, you know, recruit a lot of census takers. They are the one actually knocking the door, door to door to help. Yeah, so, so my role, I don't go door to door. I go straight to the organization part yeah, and to, to provide education, awareness, communication, build a partnership. And then through their help, because they, you have thousands, thousands of Chinese or Taiwanese or always Chinese here. You need to use hierarchical organization partner to help you to put, you know, spread out the word. And again, they are the trust voice because they go to that, com for example, they go to temple, they go to church, they trust the pastor, they trust the priest. So that's how we, we hook up, you know, uh, with community leaders, with their trust voice to bring back more people, you know, uh, to participate so, in this. So what, do you have any idea what your percentage of success is within your community, you know? You mentioned that 62% of, of the population has responded and all the households uh, has responded. But what about the Chinese community? Can you say whether it's 62% uh, or more or less? Well, at this moment, we cannot see that data yet. The so currently online data we can see, it. we can see by the census tract online, we can see what census tract has how many people population and what is a sales response rate. And that's yeah. how I get involved with Senator, you know, Moriwaki, yeah. she's on uh, District 12. Yeah. I use the program I designed to show her, you know, Waikiki is your district, but it has very, very, very low response rate. Can you help? And start from there, she's very proactive with trying to help. Oh, and very yeah, nice she, of her. Yeah, yeah. terrific. <laughs> Yeah, now, but what about the other, uh, you know, the other countries? What, what about Korea? Uh, what about, um, uh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, let's see. Japanese. Yeah. Japanese, right. Yeah. What about Southeast Asia? This, this, you know, there's a whole bunch of countries. Do they have representatives like you for those other countries as well? Yeah, we do have a, a partnership specialist here that who speaks Japanese, okay, and also, uh, uh, Filipino language. Mm, uh, yeah. And we, we have uh, Hawaiians and Samoan Pacific Islanders. Yeah. So we, we total have uh, about seven partnership specialties here in the whole state of Hawaii. And some, you know, a couple of them in Neighbor Island to help Neighbor Island. But if there's a need, we fly over to Neighbor Island to help. So, you know, the, 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 the census was supposed to last, you have to correct me on this, but it was supposed to last to, to near the end of the year, I want to say December. Um, but it got cut. It got cut by a month anyway, uh, by the administration. 
Um, and so that it's, the window is going to be closing here pretty soon. Uh, what is that? At the end of October, is it? It's going to be cut soon. Um, so how does, <laughs> it, what month is it? Can you, can you tell me? Well, this kind of sensitive. All I can say is, you know, uh, there's a court litigation going on right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, you know, we are not allowed to comment. All we do is we try to encourage everybody try to respond now you, ha you haven't responded yet. That is a key. Don't wait. Oh, there's another month or another week. Yeah. If you do it now, it doesn't matter. And that's a key point. Yeah. So we wait for, see what is the final just, you know, uh, judgment from a court and decide. But at this moment, we try to give the word out. You know, it's not too late. As long as it responds now, you don't have to worry about when <laughs> will the sensor be closed. Yeah, so. Sure. But, but you know, uh, it just strikes me, and you can, you know, you can agree or disagree, um, that if you cut it off early, you're going to have a, you're going to reach fewer people. There's, it's not, there's not as much time available for you to do your work, for people to respond. So you, by definition, you're going to cut off a few people at the end. Am I right? Well, theoretically, that is true. But amazing, the team did a great job. We actually, we talk talking about enumeration. There are 62.5% that did a self response, either online, uh, by the phone, or through the mail. The rest of them are rely on the sensor taker, they go door to door, right? Even though there's some sort of challenging, you know, issue happening because COVID-19 people refuse to open the door. <laughs> yeah, so, but so far, up to this morning's records, total we have 99.4% of household has been enumerated. But I want to say enumerated is at least somebody already communicate with them. Whether they respond or not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, but sure. we all we you can not, do is ask. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. At least we we bring the message. We remind them, encourage them, but we cannot force them. This is a free country, <laughs> you know. So we <laughs> we 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 respect their, their, their choice. But amazingly, is uh, just from July 30th, we start all this, uh, you know, non-response, you know, uh, 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 census taking, you know. Uh, yeah. It actually bring out our total enumeration, I don't say response rate, enumeration rate up to 99.4%. That's really terrific. Now, are you, are you working in more than one district at the same time? You're working here, obviously, but you know, are you also working in California and in Los Angeles uh, doing the same thing? Is that included in your, you know, your area of operation? No, actually, I'm focused on Hawaii. Uh, we do have a weekly or monthly meeting to exchange the knowledge experience in other regions. And occasionally we gather together in headquarters. We 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 you know uh, we discuss uh, exchange ex experience. As I say, you know, even though I'm in Chinese community, but you know, there's a big Chinese group in San Francisco. There are a big Chinese group in, in Los Angeles, right? Even other state. So we we cover seven state in the western regions. Yeah, you know, for the LA regional office. Actually, LA regional office. It's the biggest one in the nation. That's what I heard because the population, we are the biggest size. California, a lot of people there. So, yeah, so it's, we, a, it's, a, it's a major thing. It's, it's constitutional. It's important. I'm so glad you're doing this. Query, though, what, what will you do when it's over? I mean, I don't know when it actually would be over for you. You go back to your previous uh, government job tax, I guess it was. Um, what, 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 where, do you, where do you go? You stay with the census uh, all through the 10 year period or you go do something else? Uh, well, I, yesterday I attend the statewide, the biggest you know, census, uh, uh, CCC, we call that the Complete Count Committee that was chaired by Hawaii Community Foundation. And I have mentioned to everybody in during the, the last conference that we have, the monthly conference, I share with everybody, say, you have all my contact information. I even give everybody my personal email, my personal cell phone numbers. I'm still around. And even until 2030, any question I try my best, it is for our community. You know, when I engage myself into this, I am engage myself to the community service. So uh, I, I very touching this. I went to you know, visit some new immigrant group I was invited for, you know, uh, making presentation, even go to senior housing, the Kukui Garden. There's one lady, 94 years old, and she came out to talk to me after my presentation. 
she, you know, she, shake hands with her, give her a hug. She said, Mr. Su, this is the first time in my life I never heard about census. Thank you so much. At least I can do it now. <laughs> so I said, so great to hear that. So actually, I told myself, census finished, but myself, my spirit, <laughs> you know, my heart is still with everybody in community because I build a trust. I cannot dump them. <laughs> we are friends forever. And I, that's all, you know, I'm trying to share. So I, I, I believe it kind of takes a while to finish the whole census, yeah. even though uh, whatever judgment by the court, I'm not working in the Census Bureau, but I'm still, I've already, I actually sent a note to my boss in LA regional office saying, if Census Bureau doesn't have a budget, I volunteer to be a, a point of contact here. I want to be a bridge to build the people in Hawaii to communicate with Census Bureau headquarters. Yeah. And don't worry about budget or pay. I volunteer until one day he said, oh, Robert, you know, we have budget. You did a great job. <laughs> you come here. But, but that's, that's my mentality. I, I want to be sincere to show my care and, and, and love to our community, to the people here. So, oh. so yes, I'll be a forever ambassador for Census Bureau here in Hawaii, yeah, especially oh, yeah. <laughs> the Chinese community. Yeah, I, I've been talked to a lot, not even Chinese community. I even go to university. <sighs> You know, my IT background, I talked to a lot of big IT company that like your neighbor over there, Oceanic, they are very supportive. BR yeah. Fortress, the biggest, you know, the networking company, yeah. eWorld, the application company, you know, Data yeah. House, all those companies, they, they all know me, I was CIO for tax department. And we, we, you know, as my, my personal philosophy, when you deal with when you build a trust, sincere, not just the business, it's a forever friend. So, and that build an asset for me. Yeah, I learned from that. I build asset for me. So this sense of, I build a lot of asset and I don't want to let go like that. I want to continue to serve our community as long yeah. as possible. That's great, Robert. I, <laughs> I am touched by your sense of community and your willingness to volunteer. I am truly touched. Robert, no, you know, <laughs> the census 2020, uh, an extraordinary man in an extraordinary time uh, doing extraordinary things with this, this country. Thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hello.